Hey guys, welcome to the 186th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to begin our sixth project. And basically, what we're going to be doing is creating two classes one to replace the binary reader, and another to replace the binary writer. And that's because the binary reader and the binary writer, when they're reading integers, they don't give you the option to read in big endian byte order, it just defaultly reads in little endian. And if you don't know what the difference is between those two or just don't remember those at all, let me explain it. So little endian is basically reading from right to left. So reading in the wrong direction or different from how we read. So it would go right here if we were trying to read this in 32 right here. It would start at FC, which is the right, and then continue over to the left. So it would read FC, FD, FE, and then FF. But we want it to read in big endian, which is from left to right. So it would read FF, FE, FD, FC, and that's big endian. So like I said, the binary reader just doesn't allow us to read bytes in uh, big endian. And there are some instances where you're going to want to read in little endian, but you're more commonly going to want to read in big endian. So we're going to create a class that will defaultly uh, set the byte order to big endian, but you will be able to change it to little endian if you want to. So the first thing that we're going to want to do right here is just right click on our project, go down to add, and click class. So we're just going to want to add a new class file. And we're just going to want to call this class file um, Adams.io. And we're just going to call it um, IO because in the system.io namespace is where all the readers and writers exist. So we're just going to go ahead and click add. Now we're just going to want to call the namespace Adams.io and not the class. We're actually going to want to call this class right here base IO and that's because we're going to have our reader and writer classes be derived from this base IO class because there are a couple things that would be in both of the classes so it's just a much cleaner way to have a base class and then derive those two classes from this base class right here and we're going to want to make this class both public and abstract and we're going to want to make it abstract so that no one will be able to um, initialize it so we don't want someone to go base IO B equals a new base IO because what is a base IO it's just a base class for the reader and writer and we're gonna want to make it public because we want to make both the reader and writer public and you can't inherit from a class that's more protected than the class um, that's derived from the base class alright so inside of this class right here we're just gonna want to have an enumeration that's going to hold the byte order so you'll be able to choose from big endian byte order or little endian byte order so we're just going to want to make this enumeration public so we're going to say public enum byte order and I'm going to obviously have two things in here big endian byte order or little endian byte order and dn and little endian all right and we're just going to want to give a quick summary of what the byte order is. So I'm just going to say the order of the bytes both read and written. All right. And there's one more thing that we're just going to want to have right here. We're just going to want to have a variable that will hold the order of the bytes that the user chose. So if they chose big endian, it'll hold the value big endian. And if they chose little endian, it'll hold the value of little endian. So we're just going to want to create a variable that is protected so we're going to say protected um, byte order and I'm just going to call it byte order and we're actually going to want to make it um, be protected so that you can use it in both this class and in the derived class which will be both the reading class and the writing class alright so that's pretty much it for this tutorial and the next tutorial we're actually going to be creating the reading and writing classes and setting up methods to read and write bytes Alright, so see you guys.